All right, so this is the overclock I just achieved, which is going to be shown step by step in the following video. But I just want to go through real briefly how I did it. So if you don't want to follow step by step and you already know what you're doing, you can do it that way. So the first thing I did was I set the CPU multiplier to manual. I set the setting to 50. This is a 9900K. So I set this to 50. I set the initial ring ratio to 45. I set the initial AVX ratio to zero. Um, I changed the V-Core to override and I set it at 1.2 initially. And then I worked up to 1.3. V-Core uh, droop, I set to small droop 50% or minus 50%. V-Core PWM, I set to 800. And the VSA and VCCIO, I set to 1.2. Uh, this one in particular is more for memory overclocking, but I like to just put it in now because uh, that's usually the system agent I like to run. You can run up to like 1.3, 1.35 even safely, but uh, I figure lower is better. And then everything else I left on auto. You can change all these to 1.1 if you want, but uh, I just leave them auto. Okay, so the first thing I did was I booted up at 5.2 or at 50 in... Uh, windows with 1.2 volts and then i ran prime 95 with small fft's testing l123 cache because that's the one that hits the cpu the hardest to check my temperatures so i just ran it briefly to see what my temperatures were at as long as they stayed below 90 i would raise the voltage some more so i raised the voltage from 1.2 to like 1.25 1.28 uh, and then 1.28 was kind of pushing it uh cooling wise and then at 1.3 i was hitting uh, low 90s under full prime 95 uh, onslaught so that said to me that i couldn't Put the voltage any higher than 1.3 if i was going to be doing a load like prime 95 which isn't realistic but for daily i'd rather err on the side of caution so the next step is i came back in and i increased the cpu multiplier um up to 51 uh, with a 1x avx offset so that would mean that the avx was still at 50 and then i tested it in cinebench it was stable and then i increased this to 52 and then i believe i changed the avx to 2 at that point to keep avx at 50. Um, Basically, this lowers this 52 to 50 for AVX instructions. And then I tried it at 53, and that was unstable. So that told me that CPU multiplier max was 52. Next, I went to the AVX offset, and I tried it at uh, minus um, 0 and minus 1, and then I ended up being unstable at minus 1 under prime. So it ended up at minus 2. Once your core ratio is set and you figured out your AVX ratio to maintain stability, then I up the ring ratio from 45, one at a time. So I go 45, 46, boot up, test it, restart up to 47, boot up, test it, or up to 48, etc. When I got to 49, um, the machine just crashed midway through booting into Windows and the screen went black and reset didn't work. So if reset doesn't work, it's usually a cache ratio or ring ratio problem. So put that 58, we're all good. Um, everything else remained the same, yeah. So that's how I overclocked my CPU for daily use on the Z390 Dark. Uh, you can, I could probably get higher clocks than this. I could probably get up to 5.3, 5.4 if I overvolted more, but it wouldn't be able to tolerate um, prime type loads. So 1.3 is the sweet spot for my CPU. Anyway, I'm going to include the video of me doing that verbatim uh, after this. So if you think you can follow those instructions by yourself, go ahead. Otherwise, you can follow as I do it real time. All right. Thanks for watching. All right. What is up, YouTube? Brandon here. And today we're going to be showing how to do a quick daily overclock on your EVGA Z390 Dark motherboard. So I just installed everything. So now's a good time to kind of do a little video while I'm doing the overclock. And okay. So I'm not going to use any of this junk because... Um, this stuff doesn't really work that well. Um, the OC robot gave me a good overclock. I got 5.1 gigahertz on my 900K, but the voltage was way too high. So we'll skip all this and just go straight to advanced setup. Okay, so we're at all uh, default frequencies. So the way I like to do my overclocks is the first thing I like to do is I like to figure out what temperature load my cooling system can handle. That's kind of the number one thing for me for overclocking. So CPU multiplier, let's just set this uh, to manual and we'll just, that's fine. We'll just start with 50 to be conservative. Ring ratio, um, let's set that to that ring ratio is basically your cache. So let's set that manually to like 45. AVX offset, we're gonna set to zero for now. Um, AVX is basically a instruction set that really hammers the CPU and generates a lot of heat and current draw, whatever. So you can basically set it so you can have a higher overclock, but the ratio offset will lower the overclock for AVX instructions. But for now, since we're gonna do heat testing, we want everything to be equal. So go down, leave that alone. Um, extreme voltage mode, leave that alone. Okay, so V-Core, we're gonna set this to uh, override and target voltage. Let's see here, target voltage. Since we're starting with, since we're on a 900K and they tend to run hot to begin with, let's start with 1.2 volts and just see how it goes from there. Basically anything up to about 1.3, 1.35 volts is safe for daily use as long as your cooling system can handle it. And even higher if your cooling system can handle it, but we're gonna be using Prime 95 to really generate a lot of heat. So we wanna start with lower voltage and make sure we maintain okay temperatures. So let's start with 1.2. Uh, V-droop, let's see, V-droop. Let's set that. So the V-droop is basically the variance um, that's allowed in the voltage. So for example, we picked 1.2, so it's going to overshoot, undershoot that 1.2 number. So we want to keep that a little bit smaller. So I usually use um, either 50 or 75. Let's just go 50 because it's in the middle right now. Change this to 800. Uh, let's see. We'll keep going down. Uh, system agent. This is for RAM overclocking. Um, anything up to about a 1. even 1.35 is okay for daily use. Let's just put it at 1.2 for now. And the same with VCCIO. Let's see. Uh, these bottom voltages down here, you can set them manually if you want to lock them in at like 1.1, but I usually just leave them alone. 
Okay, so we're not gonna do anything with the RAM. This is just for CPU right now. So let's F10 save and reset, and then we'll boot into Windows and we'll hit it with Prime95 with AVX and see what kind of heat we generate. All right, so we're in Windows. Let's just go, uh, we wanna turn core temp on so we can monitor our uh, temperatures. And, you know, let's see, we're at 43 max on one core at 1.2 volts. All right, so let's hit it with some Prime95 and see what our temperatures uh, do. Oh, let me move the core temp around so we can see it. Okay, so you're gonna do small FFTs, maximum power, and we'll watch our temperatures. This temperature isn't as accurate on my motherboard on the Z390s. You can actually look at the temperature on the post code, which is more accurate. So we're gonna look at that. But for now, let's just hit it and see what happens. And we have a crash almost immediately. All right, let's reset. So in that case, voltage was probably too low to handle uh, Prime 95. So we'll go back in. And we're just going to give it some more voltage. Let's do 1.25. Save and reset. Let's do it again. All right, we're back. Get our core temp up. Cool, Prime 95. Okay, wait for that to load. So we're going to do small FFTs again. So at 1.25 volts, and let's see what happens. So we immediately jump to uh, 80 degrees or so. So this is 1.25 volts at five gigahertz with no AVX offset. Now keep in mind, Prime 95, this version of Prime 95, uh, this is like worst, worst case scenario. Basically no actual software will ever hammer your CPU this hard. But for daily overclock, I like to think of worst case scenarios. So I just, I don't run it for too long. I just want to see what the temperatures are at. So on the screen down here, we see the highest one was what, 84? Uh, on the motherboard itself, it says 84. So 80, mid 80s, it looks like. So we can give it a little more voltage. I don't like it to go um, under Prime 95 for short tests like this. I don't let it go above, you know, low 90s. So we can give it a little bit more juice and see what happens. So let's stop Prime. Stop, cool, and you'll see the temperature just cratered back down. All right, let's restart. So again, this is just temp testing. This isn't uh, doing anything else. Okay, so we were at 1.25. Let's up it to 1.28. Save and exit. All right, we're back. Get core temp up, prime 95. And let's hit it and see what happens. All right, so on the motherboard, it's reading 85, down here it's reading 88. <laughs> All right, so heat's uh, not too bad. So we'll up it to 1.3 volts and just see if we get into the 90s. Again, this is worst case scenario. I just want to see what the heat load it can handle. Okay, so we're going to go for 1.3 volts and just see what kind of heat we can generate. Prime 95. I don't think we'll be able to go past. I think 1.3 volts is going to get us into the low 90s to mid 90s temp wise. So I wouldn't go any higher than 1.3 volts for a daily uh, use. Because again, it's going to run cooler than that because it's not going to be hammered as hard as Prime 95 does. But again, daily. Small FFTs, 16 threads, boom, hit it. So temperatures immediately jump to mid 80s. On the motherboard, it says 88. Okay, so worst case scenario, which is Prime 95 with AVX, my uh, cooling system can handle 1.3 volts, not any more than that. All right, you can see one of the threads uh, dropped. So yeah, so that's what the voltage we'll stick with is 1.3 volts. So our further overclocking will be based on that. Okay, so let's exit. We'll restart. Okay, so let's uh, see how high we can go. Well, what we're gonna do is first we're gonna set the CPU multiplier. Let's do 51. So 51 CPU multiplier, okay. And let's set AVX offset to one. So that will mean that AVX will still be operating at a 50 ratio, whereas everything else will be at a 51 ratio. We'll leave voltage at 1.3 because that's about the highest we can get. We'll leave everything else uh, the same. All right, save and exit. So now we know what heat load we can handle, which is 1.3 volts. As you increase frequency, you're going to increase the heat a little bit as well, but not nearly as much as adding uh, voltage. So now that we've done our heat testing in Prime 95, we're going to go to Cinebench for just stability testing. You know, I, I use uh, Cinebench R20. Okay. So I'll do the core temp. Cool. And Cinebench R20. So this is just to see if uh, the CPU crashes under... So we're at 5.1 with one AVX offset. Let's see what it does. All right. Temperature is 77. So this is, you know, significantly cooler if we're just running Cinebench as opposed to Prime 95 with small FFTs. Okay, cool. Let's see what our temps were. Maximum temp was mid 70s. Okay, so not bad. So that was a quick stability test. Let's restart and up the ratio again. Actually, you know what? We can use uh, what was it? Elite. I've had sometimes it seems like I have better results doing it in uh, in the BIOS, but let's try just increasing the ratio in Elite just to make it easier and see what happens. So we're just going to increase. Uh, oh, what's we got to do? Well, we're just going to increase the ratio to 52 for everything. Now, unfortunately. This will not allow us to change the AVX offset, so we can only change this, but uh, we'll, we'll leave it and we'll see uh, what happens. 
All right, so let's do Cinebench again. So now we're at 5.2 on 1.3 volts. And let's see if it remains stable with 1x AVX offset. All right, cool. So stable enough. Let's try, uh, let's live dangerously. Let's go to uh, 53. So that would mean we should be running at 5.3 gigahertz. Let's see what our temps were. So max temp was 80-ish. Okay, 5.3 at 1.3, I think we'll probably crash, but uh, we'll find out. That's like right on the edge of stability. Actually, when I'm not, we're up. Oh, there we go. All right, so let's reset. So we're going to try increasing the AVX offset and see if we can run it at 5.3. Okay, so let's change this to 5.3 or 53. Let's change the AVX offset to, let's try three. So that means AVX will be running at five, at 50 multiplier and everything else will be at 1.3 and we'll leave we'll leave this at 1.3. All right, save, reset, and uh, we'll see if we can get a Cinebench run. D6, great. So we had a failure to post. Give me D6 error. So let's just make sure my settings are still saved. Yep, they are, okay. No changes, configuration saved. So it really doesn't like 5.3 at 1.3 volts. So since we're gonna be running lower temperatures, let's just see if we can boot with a little more voltage. So we'll go 1.35, save, exit. 1.35 is about the maximum uh, daily voltage I'll ever use on the CPU. Unless I'm running like heavy AVX stuff and I'll run 1.3. Yep, so it looked like it just needs more. I probably didn't need to add that much, but I just wanted to see if we could uh, get through this and boot. All right, so 1.35 volts, temperature is okay, send bench. Let's see what we can do here. So we're running 5,300 megahertz on the CPU. We're running a three AVX offset and we're running 45 a ring or cache. Okay, let's see. No, all right. So it doesn't like uh, 5,300 at all. So we'll back that off. So we'll put this at 52. We'll put this back at two. We'll put this back at 1.3. Um, you know what, let's see if we can get away with one AVX offset. So, I mean, we're running at 51 for AVX, and we'll try that. I like to keep my AVX ratio as close to the core ratio as possible with its stability, with its stable. All right. So we're at 5.2 uh, core, core ratio, 5.1 or one offset AVX, 1.3 volts. Let's see, temp, we're in mid 70s on the motherboard. All right, cool, so relatively stable. Uh, let's see what our temps were. Max temp was 79. All right, so let's see if we can take the AVX ratio out altogether. Because it seems like 5.2 is the highest the uh, machine will run um, stable at 1.3 volts. So let's see if we can get AVX ratio to zero. All right, so zero. So that means everything's gonna be running at 52 at 1.3 volts. Let's see if that works. No, it does not like that. So it looks like we need a AVX of one at least, offset of one. Otherwise it doesn't even boot into Windows. Okay, so 52, let's give this one back. Okay, now the last thing is the cache or ring ratio. You wanna get this as close to the core ratio as you can while maintaining stability. So it's at 45 right now. Let's go to 46. Remember, we've already decided our target voltage is 1.3 because that's the maximum heat we can dissipate um, and keeping the temps below 90. So during prime, if you're not benching you know, for prime, not every day, then you can do higher. So let's change this to 46, save, and we have our one offset and reboot. Okay. So here we go. Our temp. Let's run it. So we're at 5.2 gigs all cores. Offset ratio of one for AVX. Our cache is 46. Our ring ratio is 46 on 1.3 volts. No RAM overclocking done at all. This is all just CPU right now. All right, cool. So let's see what our temps were. Uh, 80. Okay, let's restart. Let's try uh, bring that ring ratio up another. All right, so we're at 5,200 megahertz cores, 1x AVX offset, and 47 cache ratio, or ring ratio, on 1.3 volts. So yeah, basically the way I overclock is I test for temperature tolerance first for every day, and then I pick the voltage, the maximum voltage I can stabilize temperature-wise in Prime 95 with uh, small FFTs, and then I build my overclock from there. So then I get the core ratio as high as I can under that clock, and then I get the AVX ratio set as high as it can, and then the last one I do is the cache ratio or the ring ratio and i try to get that as close as possible to my core ratio without increasing voltage all right cool so that seemed to work okay see what our temps were same okay all right so we're at 52 core ratio 
1x AVX offset, 48 ring slash cash ratio, and 1.3 volts. And our temperatures are running in the high 70s, low 80s. So that's pretty good for a daily type uh, build. All right, let's check our temps. 80s, perfect. Well, let's see if we can get that ratio even closer. I could go a couple steps at a time, but I like to just be methodical, take it one step at a time. You want to get it as close to the core ratio as you can while remaining stability, stable under voltage. Up. Oh. And we're dead. All right, so we didn't like that. And reset buttons, button is not working. So when your cache gets too high, when you have a cache uh, or ring ratio crash, uh, your reset button won't work. So you're gonna have to hold down uh, the off button to turn the system off and back on. So 49 is not not okay. Cache ratio flew a little too close to the sun there. So 48 seemed okay. All right, so we have to do a long-term test just to see where we're at. But it looks like our final uh, CPU overclock is gonna be 52 CPU multiplier, uh, ring ratio 48, AVX offset of one on 1.3 volts with 50% uh, small droop. Uh, 800 PWM frequency, uh, 1.2 volts on system agent and uh, VCCIO. The, the, the system agent is more for memory overclocking, but I like to just set it now. That way I can forget about it. Um, these two values, you could go up to even like 1.3, 1.35 max. Uh, but for daily, I like to leave about 1.2, 1.25 max. Uh, but you can do higher. I mean, I've done higher on other CPUs and they've lasted. Um, everything else is auto. You could set these all to 1.1 if you wanted. Uh, it'd be fine. So now that we have that, let's save. Save profile. This is AVX safe because it's specifically uh, the voltage is limited to where it's not going to generate 98 plus degrees. Um, I will make profiles that can go higher than that with more voltage, uh, but those are for specific like benchmarks. All right, so let's save and go back into Windows. We'll run one more Cinebench just to be sure, and then we'll uh, hammer it with some Prime just to test its stability. So we're in high 70s, low 80s, temp wise, so everything's good. All right, cool. 5340. Let's check our temps. Okay, that was all good. Now let's hit it with some Prime just to test stability. So first, let's do, hmm, let's do small FFTs. It should get into about 90s, but that's okay. This is the hardest load you can hit it with. Let's move this just so we can keep an eye. And boom, let's hit it. Now again, this is worst case scenario. Uh, so as long as this remains stable, our temperatures are in, you know, oh, doesn't remain stable. All right. So let's drop the AVX to two and see if that works. Two. See, I was able to reset there, so it wasn't a cache failure. So we're good on our 48 ring ratio. All right, let's try again. Small FFTs. And we'll wait for that to go away, and then we'll hit it. All right, so yeah, 1.3 volts. It looks like a 2 AVX offset is what we need. So we're running 5.2 on all cores, 2 uh, AVX offset. So we're running 5.0, or 50 multiplier on AVX. Uh, 48 ring ratio, or cache ratio at 1.3 volts. System agent and CCIO are 1.2. So I'd have to run this for you know a while i wouldn't run this one too long because this is unrealistic but maybe like 15 minutes or so just make sure the temperatures think they crazier than that yep all right so that's basically how i do an overclock nothing crazy it's just uh paint my numbers basically so we'll go back into the bios and let's give a quick rundown and we'll put that at the beginning of this video so you don't have to watch this whole thing if you don't want to you can just follow the directions